Just remember that. Tell us when we're on. Yeah, we're on. Oh, I think I'm here to in my Western Spider. Hello everyone, welcome to the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame here, you, 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 you and you, and I'm Thunder Cloud, my mum calls me James and you, to in the sort of virtual reality zoo. Virtual reality? Virtual reality zoo. Yeah. So we are the virtual reality zoo because if people are zooming through that like into the web thing, watching us, it's like virtual reality, isn't it? I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're the animals in the zoo tonight. Yeah. And I thought I'd share that with you because tonight at Rogers in Delight, we've got to just make shit up from our heads or not. Oh god, oh, oh, no. no. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh, we're not just gonna do that. Some people, some people have got some poetry that they want to read out as well, so I brought yeah, a letter yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought a letter from John from Oh John, I know it was sent to me. No, oh, yeah, well, yeah. I'm happy to hear it and I'm happy yeah. for anyone to read out whatever they want to read out. Do an extent we're gonna do do an exemplary thing about your friends. Oh, well, I'll start with um, the, the water be water. here now. I once took a photograph of a big cow. It was made of fiberglass and it was beside the road. And this is what happens. And so the story goes. Mm. So the past and the future just exist in our memory of this infinite, eternal now, as I can see, the past is a memory of what has gone and the future is a memory of what is coming. I'm winging it, that's it, yeah. Um, so that's, that's where I've been, that's where I've been, um, you know, contemplating this way. Just winging it around there. But I've been contemplating like the street out there this week. It's been um, just sitting there, being here now, um, experiencing life and letting it wash over like um, those waves that I talk about, the big ones, you know, like life is a, a chaos and chaos theory of um, like reorganising complex systems is that as they get more and more complex, they actually eventually get so complex that they break down and they reorganise at another level. And it's like that wave that washes over you um, when you're you know, in the surf and you dive under the wave and it's all calm and the chaos just goes like that and it's like, yeah, I'm just being here now in the water. And the, like the waves go, and everyone out there is on the car, and they're in the nest, and they're all they're all the um, they're the crashing waves. Give us and three snapshots from the street. Three, three snapshots from, from the street. Right. Well, Mick and Peter are brothers, and they told me about the um, Chinese gold cutting out on Oban Road. So if I go and talk to, apparently, Joseph George, whose father Joe George at one time made this magnificent building and ran movies from here, um, if I go and talk to him, you go out towards Mistake Road, or I think he said that way, and then about 25 k's out, you've got Oban Road, and there's two k's down there, and there's an old Chinese gold cutting, and, the, and it goes all the way down this cliff to the creek where they, you know, dug it out with pixies and because they were trying to make a, a sluice or something like that. Oh. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> but that's not the first, that's not the other the only time I've heard about the um, the mystery gold up Lift out it. towards Mistake Road. If you've got anyone out there on the satellite mm -hmm. watching interested in that, you can recommend that book. Most libraries in their region. Okay. Which book is it? A world so, so changed. changed. Yeah. If they're interested in all that Chinese market stuff. But tingling around it. Okay. It's great. And that reminds me, Gladys. All my tingle are there. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a book Have for you. Read that, by the um, all right. Well, here, here we go. And um, 
what, what I was pondering, because I didn't actually do any pondering or writing today yet, and I haven't actually written today. This message will find those who are supposed to hear it. Never, well, stop overthinking and slow down. Neither the past or the future have any existence apart from the now. Life only exists only in this very moment. And this moment is infinite and eternal. So that's my most recent writing. So that's why I was on that kind of thing. But a snapshot from the street, yes, I can do that. I definitely <coughs> have to have to do that. Yeah, like here we go. That too, left feet. A snapshot from the from the street. Chapter one. <laughs> Sunday morning is warm and quiet, brisk winds blow and the sun shines bright. Two dogs are taking their owner for a walk and a fellow named Brendan stops for a talk. I apologise, it's dog all and rhyming in couplets, but anyway. I sit on the bench sipping coffee in the street, contemplating life and what I'm going to eat. The sun beats down and I'm sitting all alone. Give a man a smartphone, give a dog a bone. Little puffy clouds are floating in the sky, little birds are hopping, parrots flying by, the sun, sun still shines and the wind still blows at spring time now, but winter brings snows. A tradie in a ute, iced coffee and a meat pie, and lifts a finger from the steering wheel, driving by, riding down the tone of the street, my home, give a man a smartphone, give a dog a bone. Rolling down the highway, B double is a trucky gratitude for what, he, what he's got. Feeling very lucky. Locals tell me of the Chinese gold digging ways. Check the Chinese cutting out one of these days. You need to go and ask Joseph George. It's out on the Oban Road and down a gorge. Life's an opportunity to participate, not moan. Message on my smartphone. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> Check it out the street in the car museum, people come from far for the cars to see them, soaking up the sun and get a little tan, sip a cup of coffee and think about this land. Relaxing in the street, waiting for a yoga class, gratitude for this time, resting on my ass. Along walks a woman and her name is Joan, woman with a smartphone, give a dog a bone. Sunday morning, Gyra in the street, I oh, write, not many interruptions, lots of peace and quiet. Outside the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame, I'm thundercloud repairing and some call me James. Early, early Sunday morning, sitting in the sun, writing on my phone is a little fun. People come along, no longer alone, writing on my smartphone. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> and that was when... I hit post and you arrived and I said that last line and you go, what? <coughs> yeah, you got to write us an app. Anyway. Give it up. Sunday morning. My Sunday morning sitting in the street. And there's much more. There's chapter one and chapter two and chapter three. And um, yeah, and the only little thing is with five little puppies. Oh, look how cute! Five little puppies! Oh! Five little puppies were walking in the street looking for a friend who had something to eat. A truck ran over and knocked them all dead! All except the sixth little puppy whose name was Fred. Fred was too smart to walk on the road. He was behind the toilet eating a cane toad. Fred started barking in pain, made a noise and died from toxic co cane toad poisoning. The seventh little puppy was too smart, made his living from selling little puppy dog art. Went to the butcher and ate really healthy as a famous artist. Became quite wealthy. And the seventh little puppy didn't walk on the road and he never, ever, ever ate a toxic cane toad. <laughs> so I had to give some, some laughs to the place because like the three monks that were laughing and one of their mates died and they kept laughing. Yeah. And so, <laughs> someone came and said to me, yeah, but your mates just died, why are you laughing? And it's because he came to us last night and he said, wouldn't it be funny if I died tomorrow? 
So, um, instead, there was a man who loved to laugh, and he laughed so long that he would barf, and then he laughed a little bit more until his head fell off and rolled on the floor. And, st and stopped by a fridge, and this is what he said, I laughed until I lost my head. But no, I can imagine something more funny. Imagine if my head fell laughing in the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Um, who would like to <laughs> Would you like to come up, Roger? Oh. All right. Oh, okay. yes. Cool. Yes. Well, excellent. Okay. Now, I promise to keep it clean, because yeah. if um, people don't start keeping this for clean, <laughs> when it's a general show, yeah. I'm going to start a fire. My head just fell off in the day, mate. They can go more dirty than they As an upcoming poet, um, I've been winging it lately. So, tonight I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to get someone to choose a subject. And I'm going to bring a poem for the subject. So, who would like to choose the subject? Tinga. Huh? Tinga. Oh, it's come on. What's that? Tinga? I don't even tinga. know what Tinga means. Tinga. Tinga. Such a poetic sound. Isn't it? Another one. Give me something. Uh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, All right. I was going to say bush animals. Yeah. Okay. Right. Give me a poem. Give me a subject. Kookaburra. 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 Now there's been been a song written about a kookaburra, so you just stuff that. Well, okay, here we go. Okay, kookaburras. There you go. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> In my language, we call a kookaburra a kookaburra A kookaburra kaka laughs every day. At dawning, uh, at dawn till dusk, he sits in a tree. You had to pick a bloody animal, didn't you? You had to pick me up some All right, here we go again. Right, cockaburras, cockaburras or cockaburra? Cock you choose. Cockaburras or cockaburra? What can I say? A bird that laughs each and every day. A beautiful bird with magnificent feathers who will sit in the trees through all kinds of weather. As the sun comes up, you'll hear him laugh. As the sun goes down, Till it nearly gets dark. <laughs> the cockaburra <laughs> will sit there in a tree all day, happily laughing his fears away. <laughs> Loving the bird as though he is. He's such a beautiful bird with magnificent wings. Loving the bird each and every day, hearing his laugh makes me want to say, Kookaburra, Kookaburra sits in the old garden. Thank you. <laughs> Do a wing at poem, so that would be a topic. <laughs> so we've got to come up with a topic, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, come on, guys. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Okay. Ocean. The ocean. All right. Hmm. <laughs> this is not the one part. Oh yeah. No, I just. I just Dived in the sea like I dive into this poetry. It's just going to let whatever comes to my head and flow a little bit. I didn't say sea, yeah. I said ocean. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. When the ocean is the sea, it's the same topic. I'm just not going to use it. <laughs> so I'm in the ocean, and I swim down, down, down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. And there at the bottom of the Mariana, Marianas Trench, not the Marijuana Trench, <laughs> is the peacock punching mantis shrimp, which is a stomatopod. Now the peacock punching mantis shrimp is a really special little animal. It's, it's very quite small and it looks like a, what do you call it, a prawn. Or a, or a lobster or something, but it's very small. And it's called a punching peacock mantis shrimp. It's not a pun, it's not a peacock, and it's not a mantis, and it's not a shrimp, it's a stomatopod, so whatever it is, but it does punch. And it punches so fast, like that. Yeah, and that's how it kills its prey. It cracks its shell with its punch. Wow. Yeah, and it punches so fast, because at the bottom of the deep ocean in the Mariana Trench, it's like so, 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 the pressure is so powerful and like you've got seven kilometres of water or something or 11 kilometres of water above you. Um, so it's very intense pressure. And as it punches, it creates a cavitation bubble which emits light. <clears throat> like imagine that. That is amazing like animal and that's... No, it's real! <laughs> it's a stomatopod. I thought this was a problem. <laughs> and then anyway, so I ate one. I ate one. I ate one. I ate one. And I got its powers. So I could punch so fast. If I was at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and I would crack a crab shell, and as I did that, it would go, a bubble of light happened, and it would go explode because I punched so fast. Alright. Alright, Free form poetry. Yeah. Okay, gotta mix it up. Are you Ray Ash with the boys? Oh no, no, I've got. I want to answer. Okay, okay. I'm gonna answer Ash's call for Tinga. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tinga, Billy, and the wild boar. This was something I wrote last year when I arrived in town. Actually, I better get me. I better get me boar hunting outfit on. <laughs> like I get my camo so like the boar doesn't see me. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Tinga Billy was a farmer and he planted trees along his creeks and gullies and he pulled out weeds. As a lad, Billy's dad sent him off to school and he studied every day because Billy was no fool. And when he graduated ag college, he went home with a plan to lend his dad a hand to regenerate the land, and he planted fields of native yam between the forest stands, finger lime and gumby gumby. Tinga Billy's plan was grand. Tinga Billy carried water from the creek to grow the trees, summer sun had scorched the earth, brought drought and disease, plague of feral pigs led by the mighty boar, ripped up seedlings by their roots and dug up the forest floor. The yams were gone, the finger limes were trampled, and the gumby gumby eaten too. Tinker Billy knew exactly what Billy had to do. He got real mad and he ran home and he got his gun and said, Come on, Dad, the pigs are here, let's go and have some fun. The pigs bolted through the pumpkin field as they pulled up in the truck, and Billy told his dad, I'm going to fix this muck. He lined up his rifle and he took a careful aim. Little did Tinker Billy know of his approaching fame. The mighty boar charged as Tinker Billy pulled the trigger, but the rifle didn't fire. And the paw grew bigger and bigger. And Billy jumped up on the ute and he grabbed a rope because Tinker Billy knew this was his only hope. He leapt and threw his rope and caught the mighty boar and 200 kilos of wild boar gave a mighty roar. He leapt upon its back and the boar took it in his stride and bolted with Tinga Billy through the countryside. 
Through the scrub it bolted, and but Tinga Billy had a grip, and the mighty boar took Billy on a mighty bush bash trip. Tinga Billy's only hope was to wear the boar down, and his grip grew tight as the mighty boar headed into town. Through Darby's Creek, left Diamond Street, Opal Street, then Ruby Street, and he'd still be going next week if Auntie Dot hadn't here heard him shriek. He rode fast past the Wing Hing Long Museum and a busload of tourists cheered to see him. He went viral on a Facebook COVID Zoom stream <laughs> and made the whole world laugh hysterically and scream. Tinker Billy was about to shoot to fame as Auntie Dot rose, raised a rifle and took a careful aim. Squeezed the trigger and shot the mighty boar fair up the arse. In Gyra Road, the boar slowed but didn't die fast. Tinker Billy almost got halfway to Gilgai before the mighty boar finally collapsed to die. It jumped off the road to avoid a concrete truck into Bluebeard's Gully where it finally got stuck. It was Tinker Billy's very lucky day. He got down from the monster boar and he yelled, Yippee! Oh, yay! I got a monster boar for dinner when things looked dire. But Tinker Billy looked down and he picked up a huge sapphire. And when things looked dire, I landed in a ditch. I'll have roast pork for dinner and this sapphire makes me rich. And that's the story of how Tinker Billy rode to fame when he rode the monster boar 10Ks and staked the mining claim. Right last year, I think I was a ticket. That's right. How random, eh? Right. Oh, what about uh, Gladys? Yeah, well, I brought not the, the road map back in. Oh. Welcome. I think we know you. Yeah. <laughs> After that, welcome Gladys Wilson to the stand. I think we know you. I think we know you. Not the road map. No, yeah. It's love, not the car. No. I did laugh today when I got to that bridge on the right way to Tinga on the old Armadale Road. Mm. The old wooden bridge, and as you're coming towards there, are four big modern signs. Four telling you not to agitate, eh? don't go too fast, and two other words, Lords of Command. In the middle of a book on a bridge like that, four, and then coming this way, that you know. Oh, and there are four huge signs. signs. All fresh painted signs, off you go. Oh, oh, dog, Famous bridge, is it? <laughs> oh, it's not bizarre. You know the bridge on, on the old yeah, 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 yeah. And there's four big signs coming yeah. this way and going that way, all put up by the council. Oh. Do not overtake, don't go, don't speed. There's no bugger in their dog, is over there. <laughs> <laughs> you were. Oh, I love a dog. <laughs> Okay, well this is um, well, this is a this is a road map of Rye for me, and uh, I think you're just writing that nice up enough today. I think um, our lives are like a road map with many twists and turns. As we follow the winding pathway, there's still much more to learn. But the journey in life, of course, is a challenge that's now placed in our hands to guide us through good and bad times as the great universe expands. There are many bends we must navigate on this never-ending road as you share together the burden to lighten a heavy load. Now in this ever-changing world, we, shall, we still should have a choice to stand up and be counted or speak with just one voice. When sometimes though we need to stay strong and take comfort from those around us when little things go wrong. Never take our time and earth for granted, as one very wise man once said, and always be aware of those warning signs ahead. But Father Time waits for no one. He knows the reason why, as the old clock on the mantelpiece keeps ticking as each day passes by. As we all look forward to a brighter future, that's part of our master plan. So let's stand together united to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, very much in the bush, a spirit of the bush, and it's all on, you know, the, the wildlife and, the, and whatever, so all these creepy crawlies, and yes, Rick's coming up, and then uh, I think one's on uh, an old, um, yes, the old rocking chair, 
Um, yeah, he said it's our rotten chair, but the old rotten chair's not talking this time. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I've got three coming up, and then I've been, uh, the people from Nikolai House want me to write one about them because they've done poetry. I looked and seen my photo of me, um, the little, uh, paper little flyer they had down there the other day, and the girl said to me, Well, you look tall and slim. And I said, <laughs> Yes, the other day. So, yeah, so on the little flight. Nikolai House is a yeah. retirement home, is it? Mm -hmm. Nikolai House is a retirement home? Uh, well, they've come from Kalora, but they have their craft and they do all this stuff and they oh, bring right. them down from there, yeah. So. Did you cut it out? Have you got a copy of it? No, 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 I haven't wrote it. No, 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 the copy of the photo. No. No, I've got it. They, they will get me the flow out because they send them out, but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I was on there, yes, I've done that for three weeks ago. And um, so mm -hmm. I think I've got invited back there again, so hopefully I'll have So the Absolutely. photo of you will be, uh, as a young lady, will be in the flyer? The, the ladies at Nicolai House, yes, and I mean, I'm standing up there, down there. Well, you must bring it in and show us. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so on the, uh, I can't think what, no, that was in yeah, about three weeks ago. Uh, yes, I done poultry there. Um, but yes, yeah, the other one, yes, it's very much in the bush and it's on all, you know, wildlife and whatever. So, but anyway, I've got to get time to mow my lawn today. I had to, had to mow that and, and uh, then, you know, but I said I went in, I was funny the other day, so I went into Dash's hardware mm -hmm. and I couldn't think of what I wanted. <laughs> Anyway, I had to tell this girl that I had uh, a bit of a <laughs> Did you tell her a whole long story? <laughs> was it Deb or Tanya? I couldn't know. <laughs> 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 did you describe it? Uh, yeah, I just described it. I said, I had a hand and told it. Charades? <laughs> a red car, fast food plus milk and something in a jar, recycling emptying, empty past drives a farmer, this peaceful street rarely sees drama. It's not at all like Newman. Jeez, it's different. Um, anyway, uh, there are many things this place won't see, like the nightmare memories of a refugee. Bombing and guns, poverty and poor, this place is abundant. And there's no war. Peter and Mick are out on their morning walk. Two local brothers stop and chat and talk. Lynn washing windows. The street's getting busy and the earth spinning around is making me dizzy. Mothers with babes in prams walking fast. A truck full of wood chippers driving past. Eating grapefruit and honey sitting in the street. This place is peaceful here. <coughs> and life is a treat. <laughs> Ashley, would you like to come up? I'd like to tell you if I appear before the gathered throng techno people with this mm. blue. I've written a poem about Tinga. Excellent. Oh, excellent. I must say, it was one of the amazements of my life today to come to a very narrow wooden bridge on the way to Tinga 
and the local uh, government have put up four big signs, beautiful metal poles and very large, uh, not to pass, don't speed, control yourself, coming for, <laughs> coming before and after this very small bridge on a rutted dirt road on the way to Tinga. It was one of the amazements of my life and I thought that really it showed that they were out to show something. Don't speed, don't overtake on a bridge that hardly holds one car carefully driven. Uh, next week I will tell the story of the horseman next to the railway line and the conversation we had last Wednesday night about the, the golden spark. So um, James could get ready for the, the vision of the golden spark next week. On the road to Tinga, I did not see God hitchhiking, walking slowly with his dog. No, no. Old dog for a hard road. Away in God, dog, dog, God, over the Tinga clay. Over the tinga clay. I did not see a cloudless sky. Sun beaming down, streaming, seeming. I did not see the sun on that other time. Cloudy all the time. This day when I was wandering along the way, but a rent in clouds showed winter blue. Nigh to Tinga then. I did not see Lee Yi Jog with his Cantonese bamboo woven hat, 1897, with boxes of green tea, opium, dried ginger, ginseng, fore and aft, off the shoulder pole, delicately balancing as he footed along. I did not see my 1970 mate in a morphine dream, seen, side of road, listening listless to Pink Floyd and kinky cookie cooker kookaburras. I did not see Percy in a contemporary visionary moment, knock on James King's door, Bible book aloft, watching from the tower on the way to Tinga. Aren't we all? I drove today that long, well-graded road to Tinga, though I did not. It's for the poem, the troop, isn't it? Over towards Tinga Way, I should leave these words that I've got here, spieling out to you, under that rock waiting for them, neatly folded on the earth-rutted track, folded. Oh, mystic origami, folds of high noon, full moon, midnight, Touching the edge. Well, well, I'm on the way at 94, soon in my beetling car, trying to remember on the way to what's its name, uh, what's my name. Come on, dog, God, dog, dog, God, help me out. On the road to... Tinga. <laughs> Tinga. Now, now we have a mystic utterance here. I sent this to my dear friend Leslie Perrier who's been making movies and has had to wander off to the Burgundy bush, literally in Burgundy, to cope with the vicissitudes of pandemic, endemic, endemic, pandemic, and the variousnesses of life when you're 30 and making movies. Um, wonder, 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 ponder, yonder, yonder, ponder, trains to central, central trains to depart. Let them start to depart. I, I got that wrong with my finger on the plastic button and instead of wonder wonder all as one word I got I, I did it um, uh, in format with the wonder and then a space and wonder and I thought oh maybe that's how if it was ever printed it should be done the, the wondering and then off with the down to central where my mother once said to me well I said to her if we never meet again, Mum, what would you say to me? And she said, don't lose your passion. And that was my mum, and that was Central Station. <laughs> she used to regularly ride her horse from Haberfield to Coogee on Saturday, have a swim, <laughs> and ride her horse back home. And she, if anyone is listening to these words of the English language, is still <laughs> rolling along at 94, and actually open to Sydney Harbour Bridge because... The ribbon was there and the great fascist warrior with his horse and sword was about to rush forward and cut it. But Patty, being a little girl able to walk and excited and adventurous, wandered out under the ribbon and her mother said, where's Patricia? And Dad said, 
Ah, oh, she's out there in the middle of the bridge. She was looking like that. Hey, are you laughing too? I never stop. And I suppose in a sense she really did open um, Sydney Harbour Bridge. Well, uh, <clears throat> Bato sent me a letter. Oh, this is very, very uh, tumultuous. I, I had to rub elbows with various mates this week mm -hmm. thinking about this letter. Jono has sent this um, letter. He's, he's taken up with the Armadale Dirigible Hostel Association or Society, but he had time to pen these thoughts about our submarine reality. Um, and he sent this letter to John and O, who's passed it on to me, to read to us folks figuring here tonight what it might mean. 6th of August, Wednesday. And he wanted you all to rub, rub elbows together before I, before I read his giant epistle. Let us chant, oka, 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 oi, oi, oi. Our puss, cooey, cooey, cooey. Our puss, pussycat at the bottom of the ocean. Nine nuclear submarines at the bottom of the ocean. Oi, 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 cooey, cooey, cooey. Cluey, cluey, alcus, alcus. There's a bit of a deranged surreal letter from um, Bazo tonight, but it, it gets it gets loosened. Oi, oi, oi. John O'No likes to uh, refer to me so, does Bazo. To the chase, Bazo, this my epistle to the pinions of Gyra. We have a sacred message, so to speak. I wish to salute the chance and the wisdom of the Morrison government over their placement of the Sons of the Southern Cross under the trillions of square kilometres of water in soon-to-be-designed and built Yankee nuclear submarines. We will be, via the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Oceans, in our soon-to-be-built and delivered, built, beautiful subs. Bazo and aside in brackets he put, like this build, deliver, deliver, build rhetoric makes him feel scientific and equational, equational and scientific, which of course he isn't. That's uh, Bazo, he's not that gifted. Well, he goes on, I am so thrilled to be saluting the blood-bonded wisdom of our Anglo realm as we circle our subs with the Indians coming in upon our covered wagons Nuclear subs in proud procession off our eastern shoreline and soon our western shoreline. Building contracts are being approved. As I write this, work has started on sub and missile bases on our western coast to present, present a firm united Anglo realm against the invading hordes. Yes, US facilities, of course, to cooey cooey across the bonding waters, the salty depths. He goes on, our blood brotherhood, our shared Christian rules, based principles and our eternal verities of the rule based order to which we are committed. And then he's fallen away a little and he's got dot, dot, dot and there's, and there's a side in brackets. Bazo breaks off here, I think he was overcome with the gravity of the situation and his pr proud tribal urge to have a brotherhood of, you know, movement towards Ex expressing ourselves in the world and projecting our power. I think he was overcome. And the trillions of tons of water weighing down on him. If he's a young fellow, he said to John I know, going up Beatty Street Mall the other day, that he too would go into service and he would lie horizontal in the sub, just feeling and vibing and channeling those trillions of tons of water above him. <laughs> I really had a heroic moment, a heroic image of him. Anyway, soon to weigh upon our intrepid mariners, these trillions of tons. All practice launch drills, that's <laughs> over rockets. that he's been studying how at certain points you can put on gear and blast yourself out to reach the surface. Anyway, I can hear our old anglo realm crews calling cooey, cooey, cooey through the boundless depths across the warrior horizons. I'm very aware, John, I know, that I have the privilege to salute you and Gyra Australian Poets Hall of Fame with these salutary saluting remarks. Yes, John, I know, Australia and particularly la 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 he's got him back to la 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 Perth have faced their responsibilities to crusade and budget their dollars against the indiscriminate yellow hordes. I'll have you know our rulers based international order, Australia, England and the US, 
as bulwarks against the flow of resource, resources and investments and what not, what not, not what, it's been a hundred years, to the banks, the coffers of London and New York. All of this will put in line, into train and bring a new level of industrial power to our dry continent. And he comes to an end now. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he really got carried away with this one. I'll just draw this down with the last, the last um, spiralling rhetoric. Um, Bazo, I think, is quite a poet, and um, John and I know sent this to me with quite a, a stunned reverence, I think. So it goes on. Uh, he goes on, table and folk, ensconced between whales of lichen green, looming granite, in their crystal silent timelessness awareness which is part of the New England identity, the star-stunned winter nights will come up above us as we feel the chilly wind from Antarctica spiral up the seaboard onto our shoulders, northwards from Antarctica to give New England a certain frisson, a poetic time for the timers. And Bazo finishes, this money coming in from our investment burgers will be used for peaceful non-military purposes. He's starting a special account um, that he's contributing to for peaceful development also. All over the Fremantle Perth region, there will be new bases, military docks and missile pods. Already young women from all over Australia are keenly interested in the money-making oscillations, oops, positionations, postulations, oops, postulations, <laughs> ratiocinations, See, I, I do enjoy reading these, but Bazo gets a bit carried away when he uses the English language with his great uh, elbow rubbing comrade, Bazo. Ah, his meaning to say possibilities, isn't he? Possibilities of helping ease the pressures of millions of square kilometres of deep down oceanic, and he wanders off there and says that we should be starting to read Herman Melville, all his works, particularly Moby Dick, to face our new oceanic realities. I myself, glad he didn't write lolly lolly lolly, lolly lolly lolly, am donating capital, my capital, to the Bill Bull Buck Bean, built for the dreamy sunset delight, before LA franchise Bordellos. Oh, he seems to be going on here about the business plus abilities for the horizontals over near the Yankee. <laughs> Over near the Yankee bases at Perthfam. <laughs> He's got a vivid and very lurid mind, has Bazo. John and I said to me that one day he was walking up Beardy Street and um, he started describing all these mystic encounters he had when his nanny used to take him up and down there in a perambulator in 1947. I leave you with the ambience of that word, dispersing like a summer lightning-filled cloud over Mother of Ducks Lagoon. What word? Oh, Alcus. Alcus, yes, he says. That's the word. Floating in the sunset above Mother of Ducks Lagoon. Isn't this poetic? Alkness, awakeness, wokeness. Young Jill Permit Mate has already asked me for my answer. Just, oh, I've finished now. Young Jill, his niece, has already asked for my house address at Cotslab so she can develop her orgasmic libidinal proclivities. So, <laughs> surfacing sailors as the sun sets westwards towards the Hindu erotic eternity of Indian subcontinental <laughs> gymnastical peregrinations into the briny the sun will set. And he finishes off now. She said she needs to go preparing for commercial possibilities. Jobs, John, no, 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 jobs. Her eyes adjusting to the great all settling down into the Indian Ocean. And uh, it finishes now. I take great pleasure, John, no, no, oh, no, 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 at you reading my August, August thoughts in early October. Well, it's late October now. In the, I think the postman had a sense there was something rather gloomy about this prognostic. So in the Hall of Gyra Poets, Australian Poets, uh, no fame, he means. Please give 30 seconds of silence in respect to the men and women, women and men, to be catapulting missiles aloft and journeying to the abysmal under depths 
as they plastic buttoned, hit the consoles from San Diego, and of course there will be Aussies involved. Oi, 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 gooey, gooey, gooey. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's got really carried away there, he's a chanter. He uh, spent a lot of time after he left his nurse in 1947 in the perambulator studying Hindu mysticism. Uh, oh, they're just fingering these consoles. Some English fingers will be fingering too, the little plastic buttons in San Diego. They'll tell us it's in Perth, but they want to be more up the scale in power and prestige. They want to be little fingertips in San Diego, going click, click, click. <laughs> in commencement, because we have shown our courage to commence, I see the long last Australia has faced its destiny and its true identity in the Anglo realm. We are overcoming the convict stain. Uh, he told me to bring a whip and to, to practice some whips at this point when I got to the immortal epithet of convict stain. But I couldn't find a whip that was um, really accurate. The convict stain to emblazon under the Southern Cross. Our ideals for democracy and free play. For before all, after all, free play is the fuel spark of democracy. Uh, oh, democracy for free play. And he finishes. Oi, 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 oka, oka, alcus, 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 oka, alcus. And he asks us to rub our elbows together. I've got to tell you, I'm thinking about those girls at Perth and Fremantle, and I've got to tell you that I worked with two jams, and it was terribly, terribly complicated. Nobody knew which jam was which, but we worked our system. We jams, there were two jams, we worked our system, and when you answer the phone and then somebody asked the jam, you just say, is that horizontal jam? Or vertical jam, you <laughs> <laughs> Well, these are the reality. <laughs> Thank you. Actually. Once you have big foreign military bases, these are the realities. So. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I like, I like the rhyme. It's have you lived over there? No. No. Uh, so we've got Diane. She's got some poetry to read out soon after she get off line. But, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, welcome. Um, anyway, but well, before we do, we go over to her. The Doomsday Fairy. The, the one? Oh. The Doomsday Fairy. This is going to be COVID. Maybe. The Doomsday variant makes elephants mm. fly. Plus crocodiles go a hundred metres high. Vampire flies that feast on humans and dogs. Plus giant purple pigs that eat hardwood logs. The Doomsday Variants coming of COVID-22. You don't want to know what it'll do to you. It'll take away your fear like it's an ointment and you'll all be thriving without a government. The Doomsday Variants, no laughing joke. I know a mate who got it from some fella's passive smoke. His fingers were expanded like big blue balloons and his feet turned into antique silver spoons. You can catch it once, twice and even thrice. So vaccines won't help you but eating chocolate is the cure and our best medical advice. And if you see those giant flying elephants stop having fun, and if you see those hundred metre crocodiles, just fucking run! It's <laughs> 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 actually fed into my original stuff in that list. Right, the doomsday there. No, no, I'm. Oh, the, uh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm here in the but I do it there. Yeah. This has come up on this because this is interesting. Yeah. So she was it does. Well, when I was teaching at Walbert, this was a regular in the playground, Fair Income. Yeah. And I gather this is Fair Income. <laughs> the kids would say, like his poem, oh, you know, sir, in the ancient times, with our tribe, the Gamilaroi, uh, some of these critters around here were as high as the two story top of the <laughs> of the school, mm. the crocodile-like creatures. Yeah. And the kids are still conscious that there were critters out there not yeah. that many thousands of years ago that were that size. The megaphone. And they, yeah, they talk about it in the playground. It's very poetic. Mm. Menticide. 
Yeah, Mensa side is like on, yeah, yeah. This 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 is a bit a little bit of writing I've taken oh, out of um that I've sort of I've got sell, <laughs> saved here. It's from a book called Rape of the Mind by <laughs> by Just Merlot Merlu J O O S T M E E R L U U L O O Menticide is an old crime against the human and spirit, but systematised as new. It's an organised system of psychological intervention and judicial perversion through which a ruling class can imprint their own opportunistic thoughts upon the minds of those they plan to use and destroy. Uh, it's like a psychological operation on the whole society, mental side. It's destroying them mentally. Um, so, for example, it could be like implanting into certain cultures ideas of like black and white or racism or um, even um, socialism, communism to change the way that people think. Or the deep state. The deep state, yeah. Or uh, mm. or, or old, old troops. The sea, what sea what about the beautiful state? brotherhood of uh, bathos? Well, yeah. semi fascist. So, yeah. 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 so yeah. more on that aside. Each wave of terrorising, so this could be like, you know, creating terror, creates its effects more easily after a breathing spell <laughs> than the one that preceded it because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. So morality becomes lower and lower and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign become stronger mm. and it reaches the public already softened up. Mm. So this is how that be, that, how the media sounds works. Sounds like a Murdoch press. Works. Well, no, it sounds like all press at the moment, no matter where you are. Well, um, because lo so logic can be met with logic while illogic cannot be, be met because it confuses those who think straight. The big lie and monotonously repeated nonsense have more emotional appeal than logic and reason. So while the people still searching for a reasonable counter argument to the first lie, then the totalitarians can assault them with another lie and then they get more confused. So what happens, modern technology teaches man or woman or it or him or her or whatever you want to observe as identify with to take for granted the world he's looking at. And it takes no time to retreat and reflect. Technology lures him on, dropping him into its wheels and movements. No rest, no meditation, no reflection, no conversation. The senses are continually overloaded with stimuli and man doesn't learn to question his world anymore. The screen offers him answers ready-made. Um, furthermore, Pavlov made a significant discovery. The conditioned reflex could be developed most easily in a quiet laboratory with a minimum of disturbing stimuli. Every trainer of animals knows this from his own experience. Isolation and the patient repetition of stimuli are required to tame wild animals. The totalitarians have followed this rule. They know that they can condition their political victims most quickly if they are kept in social isolation. Lockdown. <laughs> Totalitarianism is man's escape from the fearful realities of life into the virtual womb of the leaders. The individual's actions are directed from this womb, from the inner sanctum, and man no need longer man need no longer assume the responsibility for his own life. Mm. The order and logic of the prenatal world reign. There is peace and silence 
the peace of utter submission. Oh. That's um, Juiced Mer Mirlu from The Rape of the Mind. What year? Of course. Oh, I can't remember that. Of course, in, up. Yeah, of course in Chinese culture, when you have one and a half billion to feed, they expect the state to look over them, they look do. after them, and mm. look within them. That's they the expect that. It's a different culture to ours. Well, one thing I did learn in China, though, when I lived there, is that you Chinese, have, yeah, yeah. The Chinese people are not the Chinese government. Like, a, like I said earlier, Australian people are not the Australian government. Yeah, they exist with the knowledge of Go the fact that get their government is, um, they don't like it, but they put up with it to the extent that they can. Um, and, and the, but they do totally admit, and they're not blind to the fact that it's full of corruption, whereas a lot of Australians are totally blind to the fact that Melbourne's the second most corrupt city in the world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that on some international index? Yeah. <laughs> Who wrote this guy of strength um, by Thundercloud Barry? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's me. Let's read that. Yeah. I think you've ever read that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's really, really good. I'll finish it off with the guy of strength because it, it's kind of true. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of reminds me a bit of Gladys, really. <laughs> yeah. The sun shines and the winds blow, it's dry, it's wet, there's sleet and snow. If you live in Gyra, you'll get cold. Become tough and strong and live real old. But I'm not saying, that, yeah, you're young. <laughs> Living in Gyra has wind and sun. People here walk fast and run. That's where I think about you walking fast. Frosty briskness with wide blue skies, red sunset and misty sunrise. Ice on the mother of ducks lagoon and the spring rains bring more ducks soon. Sunset and the fresh day ends, sit around fires, yarning with friends. Very good. I was like July of last year, June last year, and um, on the lagoon I saw my first pelican this week. So oh. they're here, they've arrived. Yeah. Alright, and that's it. So people out there, um, click it a like, subscribe. Thanks for joining us. Come to and, the um, the world. Yeah, and come to Gyra and visit this Grand Poetry Hall of Fame. Diane. Diane's but not a line. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go and stop it. Goodbye.